Yeah, I'm getting uh, four new tires. It was a funny story with the tires, right? I, I show the guy the cereal plate. And I say, I need 125 PSI. And he says, all our tires only go to 120. And we start arguing. And then we're, he brings down the tire. And on the side it says 130. Anyway, um, too noisy now, right? So quickly, uh, I see everything is fixed here. This, they made these plates much. They made this thicker, and they put that bar in there. So it's all fixed, all renewed. I just wish they would not do this because this thing keeps turning and it's twisting the hoses and over here they added about three feet and they strapped they strapped the bottom and and they added this this kingpin was here so now they added this part so the jeep is uh, much longer uh, they had trouble loading it on the on the deck uh, so so now yeah now I just need to I wanted to take the truck and go get coffee while they're working but the truck is crooked like I I, I cannot take the neck with me so I'll have to wait here. Let's check quickly on the truck. The front axle is still off. I can see that. So Kel tire, my favorite tire place. All right, wanted to. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to run. I don't want to climb on the trailer with the guy working there because they told me they didn't want me inside the truck so they kicked me out at least I was able to sit inside but uh, but today was a super long day uh, so Monday right I got up at 4 45 because I found that I found out that my uh, friendly neighborhood Starbucks opens at 5 or 5 30 I think 5.30, yeah, so I, I left my hotel, jumped into my car and uh, drove to uh, Starbucks, grabbed a Venti Americano, drove to my truck, moved my stuff to the truck. It's very windy over here. the wind is coming from? from here from here from everywhere all right somewhere here so I move my stuff to the truck oh now we have a sun son of a gun yeah and I move my uh, stuff to the truck and um, Drove two hours to uh, Keswick, Ontario to the trailer plant and these guys, uh, this time the guys were super busy uh, I thought we would uh, hook up everything and check but no they didn't have time so they just basically loaded the Jeep uh, on the trailer and then we managed to tug or tuck the uh, spreader under the Jeep um, they didn't have time to connect the spreader bar to an axle but I asked them I said did you change the connections and they said no so the connections on the axle should be the same I mean they can on the spreader bar should be the same as before so 
but I hope I don't have any surprises tomorrow when I'm loading uh, because right now everything is disassembled right so I called the shipper I said you guys have equipment there to help me uh, set up my Jeep and uh, booster they said yeah sure we do it all the time okay but I know they probably won't be very happy to see that <laughs> I even have my axles uh, off, you know, but I'll, I'll tell them, hey, I just picked up this uh, at the shop, right? They didn't have time to hook up. But everything looks good, so the Jeep looks much longer, right? The, uh, the spreader looks uh, nicely nicely made. But uh, I'll talk more about this when I, once we, we finish here, I pay, and then I can go to uh, Flying J, grab a cup of coffee. And I need some def. And then from here, it's only one hour to uh, put Hurons because I want to cross the border today. Uh, empty, right? I already set up my uh, ACE, ACE manifest to cross the border around six o'clock and uh, I'll shut down. I'll shut down in uh, Marysville, Michigan. And yeah, so then uh, this guy. Uh, Alan came out to say hello, one of my fans from Keswick and he brought me a gift, uh, he brought me an adjustable wrench for, for the trailer uh, deck pins and also last week I got in the mail, I got uh, a ratchet, a ratchet wrench with a socket and a pipe wrench from a kind gentleman, from a kind uh, gentleman somewhere in the U.S. who now have plenty of plenty of wrenches, uh, so now it should be uh, much easier to uh, muscle those uh, pins in the deck. And so yeah, Alan also uh, helped me to secure the Jeep and uh, and the Stinger. Then he gave me a ride to my, to Tim Hortons. I grabbed some coffee. He brought me back to the truck. And I started driving because I told uh, Keltire here in London that I'll be here around lunchtime. But because it's a pretty, you know, long distance, it's 250 kilometers. So it took me three hours to come here, and I didn't, I, I didn't stop anywhere. And then, yeah, we were arguing here about tires because I said I need 125 PSI and they said, no, our tire is only good for 120. I said, not gonna work. And then the guy said, okay, hold on. Let us bring the tire and we'll look on the sidewall what it says. And to his surprise, on the sidewall it says maximum cold pressure, 130. And the guy says, shoot, I didn't even know. I said, you don't know your own tires. And these are Chinese tires, but you see they're very strong, so they can take 130 psi. So this is not some kind of a third world, uh, third world war country, uh, world country tire. You know, so it's a good tire. Definitely better than than a, uh, than a rebuilt tire. You know, like a retread. Um, so yeah, hold on. So we should be done here. Shortly, and like I said, I'll just drive over to, I'll stop quickly at the uh, Flying J, grab some def because uh, they have it at the pump over there, but where I'm going in Marysville, the fuel is cheap, but they don't have def at the pump. You have to buy it in those jugs and those are super expensive. So I'm gonna fill up on def over here in Canada and Marysville, I'll just fill up both tanks and because the Jeep now is much longer I want to go on the scale I know they have a scale there at that uh, little truck stop so we're gonna scale good because I know before I was 72,000 three or four hundred pounds empty with the Jeep and the Stinger so probably now it's uh, three four hundred pounds more I would I would, I would guess so that's the plan and the, yeah then i'm gonna shut down over there Ho hopefully border crossing won't take long because i'm empty and uh, from that truck stop it's about uh, 100 miles to my shipper near detroit so i'm gonna get up at five o'clock tomorrow again and be at the gate at seven let's go briefly uh 
look again at this because it's not very easy to measure this because now it sits so high but I just got deaf I got coffee I got some uh, protein bars and I use these when I cannot find anything else because these have a bit too much sugar but at least there's no dairy and just you know natural uh, natural ingredients So yeah, I'm loading a Volvo 110,000 pound excavator. Okay, so what do we have to measure? Well, first off... Okay, so the first number is Fontaine. The second number is what I used to have. And this number underlined is what I should have. Yeah, I remember this. So... Uh, the kingpin see like how am i supposed to, i cannot i cannot measure that because uh, well at least let's measure this uh, well i don't know this one i know i only measured this kingpin on the jeep to fifth wheel And again, the fifth wheel is uh, not in the forward position. You see, it's all approximate. But I think one thing I can measure is this. Probably, let's at least measure this. Uh, kingpin to front axle, or maybe the easiest one would be. Yeah, let's just measure this. Uh, fifth wheel to center of axle one. So, Fontaine has 94. I had 65, now it should be 84.5. 84.5, hold on. So it should be 84.5. Oh, and I got new boards. Um, got these at uh, JC Trailer for new boards. Yeah, you see, like it's. Uh... Alright, so now we can approximately figure out. So so the, the, key, the pin needs about seven inches from here right so when the front is all the way here so the kingpin will be here all right so basically roughly like this well it looks like somewhere between 81 and 82 81 and 82 and what it should be it should be 84 but that's okay because uh, I'm just measuring approximately over here right so I think it's good it's much longer because you see so they strap they added this section over here and they that's what they call strapping you see this they put this piece of steel that's called strapping so it reinforces everything so they say it's when it's uh the weld is actually stronger than the original metal right and so now let's measure what can we measure over here what's the easiest way uh yeah probably like uh kingpin kingpin over here to to the plate so it was 130 before now it should be 164 but you see it's tricky like it's so tall but there was a big difference the difference were should be 34 inches right so well roughly somewhere here like again i just want to do like a rough estimate so we're measuring from where to where the somewhere here 160 yeah that's... yeah I think we I think we are on the right track so so this part became longer so yeah you see that's that's where my that's where my fifth wheel used to be and they they left this that plate so now I think it's actually much stronger than before because they have we have this now and uh, and they added this and they moved the, the kingpin.
So all this part which is uh, painted is new, right? And this part is new. So this part was somewhere here. And so when I hook up this to the trailer, remember the, the, uh, the space between the Jeep and the trailer? It used to be, it used to be uh, 31. So now it should be only 12. And so this way, I'll be able to uh, move the weight on the Jeep. And because of the low neck, I'll be able to move the weight on the truck. So the, um, the trailer will, will, will have a lower weight. And so these are my new tires. You see four tires, 350 bucks Canadian. And we uh, rotated that tire. There was a bad tire over here. We uh, rotated. I asked him to rotate it to the to the to the rear. And this tire was actually in the front axle. We moved that one over here, and this one that was bad is is replaced. So we replaced that one and three over here. So, and these are 18 ply or 16 ply, so they have very high uh, maximum load. Single is 69.40 pounds and 130 and maximum load dual is uh, 63.95 pounds at 130 I don't know looks like a pretty decent tire so it's uh, Ceylon S637 16 ply it's nothing to uh, sneeze at you know pretty good tire all right let's go we have uh, one hour to go to the border so the Jeep looks good I don't know we have one hour to go to the border and then I need to stop there duty-free and uh, I, ha I haven't printed out I haven't print I haven't printed out my uh, my uh, ace you know the cover sheet I have to print out my cover sheet and then I have to s swap my tablet from Canadian Samsung Tab 1 to Verizon American Samsung Tab 1 and we should be good to go and we're gonna shut down close to the border I'm gonna either go to Love's there's a new truck stop just south of the border on uh, 94 or go to that small uh, marathon gas which I like because there's Starbucks but then Starbucks doesn't open until I think 7 in the morning there's a Starbucks in uh, Myers so this is it for the day boys and girls leave your comments like subscribe uh, so loading tomorrow 110,000 pounds about 11 11 wide 12 4 tall so I'll be over 14 with this thing because I have a level deck you see this is when a drop side rail would be very useful uh, would make things easier would make loading easier and I need two escorts in Michigan and so tomorrow you will see my <coughs> my uh, previous pilot that I used before that lady uh, from uh, from Michigan what's her name I forgot her name and she I think she's bringing her husband because I need two cars in Michigan because I'm over 100 feet long with the stinger and I call the shipper to make sure the excavator is there. Always a good idea to check with the shipper when it's a long deadhead, right? So it's like one hour, one hour to here from my yard, and then one hour to the border. That's two hours, and then from there it's two hours. It's four hour uh, deadhead. So you wanna, you don't wanna go four hours and then discover that somebody else took the load, right? So I always call ahead, make sure that it's there and, and most importantly I said is it washed did they tell you that it must be washed and the guy says yeah yeah we know because it goes to Canada I said yeah cool and he says we're gonna rinse it and uh, blow the dirt off once it's on your trailer and he sent me a picture so the tracks look super clean you can eat your your McDonald's uh, lunch off of them which we're not gonna attempt uh, for the risk of uh, contamination of the tracks 
and yeah i'm i'm sorry if i look if i if i look awful because i feel awful i didn't sleep very well and i got up at 4 45 actually i got up at 4 30. i woke up at 4 30 and i'm looking at i i look at the window i know that it's it's that kind of hour just before five and i look at my cell phone 4 30 and my alarm was set up for 4 45 like what do you do you go back to bed for 15 minutes of course not so you get up and you start wandering like a zombie you know hitting things hitting things in the darkness you know hitting your big toe in the darkness and it's all good stuff and and so yeah tomorrow i'll do i'll try to do a video it's gonna be crazy oh yeah and because you see it's going to be difficult tomorrow uh, i i'm not sure i will have time to record a video because uh the trailer plant did not have time for me to attach the the uh, spreader bar to the axle right so i'm going to be running three plus one i just hope it's going to fit i wanted to double check that it fits but they said they didn't change the connections they only fixed the the pivoting point right they reinforced it make it stronger and uh so i hope it was gonna fix it's gonna fit but uh well, another reason why i called the shippers just to warn them that you know i'm, I'm gonna be a multi-axle road train so i need the help in setting up the jeep and stinger and the guy i said do you have equipment to do this and the guy says yeah sure we we always do this because of course they always know when it's a big excavator like this uh, and why it's so heavy it's because it has the counterweight quite often they remove the counterweight but this time they decided to keep it on and uh, that counterweight is probably 20,000 pounds at least and that's why it's 110,000 pounds but that's just a rough estimate so I ordered the Michigan permit and I ordered the Indiana permit just to get to Indiana and let go of my pilots right and then uh, Indiana I can go to Lake Station there's a bunch of truck stops I'm gonna scale before i order the rest of the permits i need to know my empty weight oh and that's one more thing i'm going to do tonight is uh, i'm going to fill up uh, full fuel at marathon gas marathon truck stop and i'm going to scale because i suspect i'm a bit heavier now than uh, than uh, 72.3 and what i have 72,300 pounds i would i had before so yeah tomorrow is going to be tricky again i hope that spreader bar will connect so they will have to disconnect one axle grab that spreader bar hook up one end to the trailer drop the the um, the leg and then drag the axle hook up the axle i don't know i see like the spreader by itself will take like one hour and then the jeep the neck will take probably another hour two hours and a couple of hours to load and so i told the guy i'll be there at like seven o'clock and i told pilots i said meet me at this address uh west of detroit at 12 o'clock because at three at three we have a curfew starting in some some county counties around that area so we have to get out of there uh by three o'clock so so the plan is to get loaded so set up uh hook up the jeep this thing and get loaded uh secure the load meet with the pilots and get the heck out of michigan and and park somewhere in um, at a truck stop in indiana where i can scale and then order the rest of the permits but i'll probably just go only as far as indiana tomorrow because it's going to be a long day so stay tuned thanks for watching take care